Hey guys, Ari here, back again with another Brick Lane vlog. Uh, it's early morning uh, this time, uh, we're at about 7 o'clock, so uh, usually the time I'm waking up when I'm uh, when I'm on my after 8 days at work, but uh, this Saturday I uh, didn't bother re uh, recording a video yesterday uh, because, uh, because of now lockdown restrictions have eased. Uh, we went out for a meal, me and the missus and kid, and we're now lad, sorry. And uh, it's still a bit strange, you know, going out in the, you know, with restaurants and stuff. It's, you know, there's still a bit, oh, there's no bar service, there's none, none of this, none of that. Uh, but I'm getting used to it. And it, it were a bit strange having that time gap from when my lad were like six months to now he's like 20 months. It's weird, you know what I mean? So, or 21 months or whatever he is now. It's just a real... It's a real weird thing this COVID's been. It's like you, especially for those who've got kids, you'll realise it's like you've lost a lot of time. So, I'll not bang on about that anyway. Let's talk about the wall. I've got a few things I'm talking about today because I've got a few different things I want to talk about. Obviously, the last video was how to work solo efficiently, and what I meant by solo was on your own with no labourer. So I didn't mean one on one. I meant like completely solo. And then. As you can see in the left hand corner, using a fixed brick clamp, uh, I got contacted by Richard um, literally about about a couple of days before I'm going to buy a pair of these. So, uh, and he sent me some, and I'm not I'm not kidding you, they're fantastic. Uh, you know, I'm going to sing the praises pretty high with these fixed brick clamps, only because I'm an avid uh, fan of building corners. I build corners, whether I'm building a plot, whatever type of work I'm doing, I'm not a big fan of profiles. Um, I've used blakes, I've got aluminiums myself that you see me using um, periodically. Um, I think blakes are quite good. Um, they're just one of them things that are quite heavy to carry around with. And as you can see, I'm on a quite a big site. The car park's quite a distance from where I'm working. Um, or, or if you're carrying it up these, you know, German style scaffolds, every bit's a kit, you know, it's always a bit awkward and especially if you're a one on one like I am, you need to be laying all the time. You wanna have a you don't want your trial out your hands, you wanna be laying bricks all the time. And sometimes setting profiles up isn't uh, ideal. Uh, it definitely has its times, it's definitely super fast with profiles. I've you I've set profiles up the night before, uh, and I've got all set loaded out and everything. And, the, and you know you can get stuff up like lightning with them but if you like building corners and you're a bit of a more traditional bucket of tools on levels get a pair of pair of fixed bricks uh, fixed brick clamps uh, i don't know how much they are now i think they're about 32 pound for, for a pair of them um but uh well talking to richard on the phone as i said on the last video you know he's a passionate guy fucking uh you know you can see he's really really passionate about making making innovative brick lane tools I watched a couple of interviews with him a few guys have interviewed him you know just up at phone sort of thing and uh he mentioned that he liked to think of brick lane as more of a sport obviously it being you know a skill and trying to get faster and how fast you can do it and how neat you can be and uh, you know i've thought about that it, you know a lot of, a lot of guys inadvertently treat it as a sport anyway but they wouldn't tell you that uh, so it's quite nice to you know see what basically uh, saying what everyone else is doing really because everyone everyone on site kind of treats it as a sport whether they fuck it, whether they you know admit it or not you know people are in competition they're always people always are you know what I mean it's just natural human nature to be in competition with people um, <clears throat> that's something I try not to do that's you know a bit of my I rebel against the norm of turning up after eight but anyway I'll not bang on too much about it but uh i've got to say uh the fixed brick clamp now is like one of my go-to tools probably uh i'll never be smashing a pin in again obviously you do need to pin into pl two places to allow you know to do certain methods with a with the fixed bricks but uh i'll talk a bit more you know as i come to you know using different methods with it uh i'll talk a bit more about how they can be applied and some some different methods for using it as you can see right now i'm using a door profile uh, just building a big uh, a panel of a boundary wall but as you can see i'm right next to a plot so my, the manager requested i rack it back at the pillar um 
so the scaffolders can get through easy and because uh, there's been a few uh, there's been a, uh, a garage or so I've built where it's just been slightly in the way of the scaffolders and so I've had to go down to like a two uh, two batten uh, scaffold on little areas which you know it's no big deal for you know it's only two battens for one lift on one corner but I said I'd uh, I'd rack this one back and uh, it was a squint pillar anyway that it's like a pillar on a squint so kind of uh, did me a favour on this one because this this little bit of wall now be after the house has been built presumably this little bit of wall will be picked up by someone whether it's myself or another bricklayer um, but yeah I don't mind the you know like when I come to a site and there's little bits of boundary wall little panels to pick up against the house they're ideal little jobs for like a solo day if you ideally like a Friday like a nice little Friday job you're not going to get a lot of bricks in yeah there might be there might only be 300 bricks or so in it or you know 300 three 400 bricks in it but you know a little bit of level work you know a little friday job early finish it's uh you know i'm a, I'm a fan of it to be fair i'm not you know the, i'm not a fucking needy and greedy sort of guy um as you can see by the by the sort of laid back style of me working but um you know i just a lot of the time I've uh, I've took on some radius walls before where you can't get a line on. There's been straight panels, but you can't get a line on. And I've laid about 500 bricks to a, to a level all day, just running in, just being, building big rack backs and running in with level on a radius. So um, I've had a few comments saying, how do you how do you make you know a, a labourer's wage and and a, uh, and your, your own wage building corners? And it's just experience. It's experience of you know how knowing how to build. Uh, efficiently you know you know using corners and just knowing how to run in quick obviously as well running in with picking that makes a massive uh, it's a massive help and with using a fixed brick clamp sort of thing that's about double the speed of pinning in I've found just looking at the footage and then watching me uh, and just doing it myself obviously instead of pinning in because you forget every time you go to pin in you're gonna you've got to grab take the pin out of the wall and then find an hammer and obviously i'm not you know i'm not on the tool belt brigade i'm not uh you know i ain't got the waistline for it like uh like charlie coyson you know that guy wears a tool belt and to be honest you know it, it looks fucking good it looks good with a tool belt it looks good i've tried it and you know i'm, I'm like a 45 inch waist or something ridiculous you know i ain't getting a tool belt around my waist i've tried putting one on and it you, i'm just too wide to what you know where the board is to the where the board is to the wall and where I stand, I just take up too much space. So with a tool belt, everything starts knocking against the wall. Um, you know what I mean? You know, it's, it does suit everyone, but definitely if you're a slimmer build, I can see like a tool belt being like an, a must. If you're a slimmer build, I used to be uh, thinner than I am now. <laughs> but uh, I've lost a bit of weight over time, you know. Kids, what am I going to say? Having kids does it to you. I had a six pack before I had our youngin. And then... Uh, I put on about 20 kilo <laughs> so uh but anyway the um but yeah when it comes to you know building corners i'm running in it it's, you know it suits the individuals you know some people won't be able to build corners uh, efficiently enough and, and and it takes practice as well you know if, if if you've always worked in big gangs using profiles and i've been on like bigger flanks of work on houses you know depending if you're building like more um sort of you know affordable housing where a lot of them are just square boxes you know on the more affordables i live in an affordable house you know i live on a, in a gleason house um and uh it's you know to majority of it, to be fair gleason they're not really that square they're a lot of like ins and outs but like you know if you look at barrett's or persimmon or you know especially persimmon a lot there's a lot of boxes depending on what you know what, what how, you know what site you're on obviously they have different style of houses but a lot of the more affordable housing firms which are which to be honest are more you know accustomed to like most working class people you know these houses where i'm building they're like four or five hundred thousand you know what i mean red row are like more of a premium sort of upper class high class sort of housing you know so the, the, the sort of houses i build you know walls around houses i build every day you know they're they're, out, they're unobtainable for for like likes myself but uh without having a gigantic mortgage but um you know if you're on square boxes all the time you get get four profiles on easy peasy you'll you'll probably think what the fuck is this guy building corners how can he even earn any money it's just because i've built these walls for you know literally 
you know, seven plus years, I've built these walls with either 440 pillars in on and off. Uh, and I just got used to racking, just doing rack backs on everything. You know, I rack the pillar back all the way up. I build a six course, six course corner at one side of a pillar, at one side of a 440 pillar, and then six course corner at the other side of a 440 pillar, and fill the pillar in as I go. You know, with the little racks, racking the pillar all the way back. And then, you know, just building it from there and then racking you know racking my pillar all the way back at one side all the way up and i'll get about 22 23 course on, on one side of a boundary wall doing it like that and it's just strategy you know it's getting used to building it a lot of the time it isn't the fastest way you could probably with two brick layers you want to get one of them timber clamps and you know set a couple of you know set a couple of profiles across the full length of the wall like where your lines obviously string in the profile and then you could fill the fill the pillar in, you know, as you go, you know, with, you know, under the line sort of method. Um, obviously, you see on a lot of these boundary walls, the, the panels are like anywhere from like 15 to 30 bricks long, depending on who sets them out. If I set the pillar, <laughs> set the walls out, I put as less pill as least pillars in as I can. Uh, so uh, there's obviously that uh, to think about. Um, I prefer to build these from the footing because I can get the, the pillars dead square. On this one particular, the, this, the pillar wasn't dead square. Uh, this this one wasn't too bad I was building here, but the other side was a little bit out. and I squared it up the best I could, but obviously when there's already some brickwork below, you can't really start lipping your brickwork all over. So I do prefer to build them from the, from the slab. And obviously I can get the perps out how I want as well. So, But it wasn't too bad. This one wasn't too bad at all. So... And um, moving on to the next bit of this video, you can see me doing a little bit of traditional. So obviously for all these guys who think I can't lay traditional, um, yeah, I'm doing the spec mix front tip style here. Um, I don't tend to put any furrows in my spread and I don't tend to spread for too many bricks, even when I'm doing long spread because these type of bricks I'm using are dead dry. Um, that's probably what inhibits me a lot of the time with pick and dip is why I find, I mean, I'm finding it quite difficult. Uh, you know, to get them down, push them as down as easy, is the mortar. The mortar's dead fucking horrible on here. It's like glue, and it goes off well quick, even if you get it like piss. So, um, I've been getting my tub pretty wet recently with this hot weather, and it's muggy as well in this area, so your gobble just dies instantly as it goes on the board. So, I've been getting, you know, getting it wet, and the bricks I've been leaving uncovered now, so... I found that if the bricks, you know, are, are look wet, even though if even though they look wet, they're still dry. So even if I leave them uncovered, it makes them layable uh, a lot easier. So um, I'm definitely going to leave every every pack uncovered. You can get you the bricks can get wet quick here, but it only takes a bit of hot weather, and you know you can lay them under any circumstance. So as long as the weather stays hot now, uh, continuously, I've heard we get two we've got two weeks of it, so. Um, these bricks should be should be good to leave uncovered. Um, uh, when it comes to traditional, uh, obviously you can see me using the big trowel today as well. Using the um, I can't see what what trowel am I using? I'm using the eleven inch. Yeah, I'm using the eleven inch as you can see. Um, it is, feels a bit different, you know. Uh, I'm going a bit all over the place with the topics today, but it's a bit all over. Um, the, the the eleven inch, I'm still getting used to it. As you can see, some of my joints aren't filled as well as me using the ten. I just can't get the mortar quite where I want it right now. Um, a lot of the time it's because the trowel isn't worn in, so it's got quite sharp edges. So uh, it's getting them worn down nicely and getting it broken in, uh, which obviously you have that teething period with all trowels. But it's 11 inch Marshall Town. Got it from Tool Station for 32 quid on offer. So I thought, why not? It's the same price as a 10. And I just got a different size trowel. I thought, I'll try it out again. First time I used it, not gonna lie. Felt like I was gonna break my wrist. But, um, I just had a go periodically. I recommend these these big trowels. You know, you're not you want to use them on straight runs. They're probably no good for building corners unless you're on a footing where they've got a lot of. Uh, if you're using if you're building block work, obviously. But if you're on brickwork, and I recommend using a smaller trowel for building corners, and then these long straight runs, as you can see here, um, I recommend using this trowel. Uh, especially if you've got like sort of long spread style gobbo, if you're doing like more of a long spread pick and dip variant as I, you know, I were doing earlier and I've been doing obviously this traditional now and I probably wouldn't recommend reaching above uh, chest height um, with a big trowel. I'd probably, as soon as you get to chest height, just switch back to your little one, a lot easier. 
there's a lot of time at chest diet anyway. I do a couple of course and I'm on my milk crate, so I don't really recommend, you know, hoisting a big trowel all that way. Uh, but for these, you know, long runs at, at, you know, low level, especially if you're in the, you know, if I was building the first couple of course off the, uh, you know, off the slab, off the concrete, uh, you know, concrete slab, it'd be, uh, it'd be great because I've noticed as well, you know, which a lot of people don't talk about in videos is, you know, you'll see people, you'll see guys with labourers with the boards set up, you know, right next to the stack of bricks, you know, board bricks, board bricks, board bricks. And a lot of time in reality, you can't get it like that. You know, like as you can see here on wall and next to some pin curbs with concrete around them. So it's like a bit of a bad, bad ground. So I've got just one, one spot board and one stack of bricks here. Uh, well, two stacks actually. And, uh, you know, it isn't always, you know, possible. And sometimes the runs aren't possible to have loads of boards, right, set out. So you sometimes you just want, like, one one or two boards piled high, you know, bigger boards. And, you know, having that big trowel, you can just, you know, if the boards are a distance from each other, you can just get a nice big big pile of gob on your board and it just goes a bit further, you know, if you haven't got as many boards to keep topping up your little trowel, so... It's all just, you know, it's just all working to the situation on the day and changing up the methods for the situation on the day. Um, when I was laying traditional, I, to be honest, I, I, obviously I, I've not really laid this way for the past eight months, so you could say I'm a little bit out of practice, but it still felt pretty good. I probably prefer to front tip on the backside of a boundary wall anyway now, especially if I've got a big rack back I can just run into. Um, the gobbo obviously is dependent because... You know, if it is stiff, you want to just be doing pick and dip. But if it is nice and wet, I'll probably do a bit of traditional, you know, traditional front tip spec mix style with no grooves in the spread. Um, obviously, it's quite hard, obviously, in these nine inch walls. I try to set them out with a bit of a gap between, uh, you know, like a, I try to leave about like 10, 20 mil. Uh, but this one was like a, a good tight, you know, a tight 10 mil in between each one. So it was set out how it should have been really, but... I try and leave a little bit of a gap, you know, so I can get my hand in to do pick and dip. But obviously, if you can't get your hand in because the bricks are a bit wider or, you know, it's, it's set really tight, you know, traditional uh, front tip spec mix style is the uh, the way to go. Um, God, those guys, you, you can just see now, watching me here doing this, how fast those guys, those spec mix guys are. So, uh, you know, make me look like a fucking old man. So, anyway, guys, um, Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, there's a couple of pictures here of this rack back I did and the garage I built before. I didn't put the photos in the last video, so I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I'm gonna be making, obviously, try making daily videos, but I think I'm gonna run out of footage this week, so I'm gonna get a video out today and a video out Sunday. And then I think I've run out of footage, so you might have a couple of days without videos, and then as soon as I get some more footage, um, I'll record some more. I'm gonna do a bit another toolbox video and I probably might do a garden video as well because I've got a retaining wall I'm building in my back garden and I'm digging the footing out. So I'm gonna take you guys through it with you um, on YouTube as well. So anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a good weekend.